So what roles do proteins and lipids have in our cells? We'll talk about that in this video. With our next group, the proteins, their monomers, or building blocks, are the amino acids. These are the monomers that make up proteins. And it turns out that there are 20 different amino acids that are naturally occurring in the proteins of living organisms. When we look at the base structure of an amino acid, there's going to be a central alpha carbon atom, and there will be different functional groups added to them. Again, for this class, you aren't expected to memorize the structure of amino acids or to know what the different functional groups are. But I would like to emphasize that some of the amino acids have a functional group that will cause them to be hydrophobic. Some of the amino acids will be hydrophilic, meaning they want to mix with water, or they'll have an electrical charge, either a net positive or a net negative. When these amino acids are connected together in a long chain, the resulting molecule is known as a polypeptide. And they're polypeptides because that covalent bond that forms between the two amino acids is known as a peptide bond. And so it's a polypeptide because there are many of these peptide bonds linked together. Now a protein is going to be made up of one or several polypeptides together. Now, when it comes to what proteins do, almost all functions of a cell involve proteins in one form or another. Every chemical reaction in a cell is controlled by a type of protein called an enzyme. The structural support of an animal cell is due to its proteins. So the, the shape and the structure of animal cells are also coming from their proteins. They're like a scaffolding within the cell. Proteins perform all of the actions of a cell. So whether that cell is moving and crawling, whether that cell is feeding, whether that cell is about to divide, all of those actions come from the proteins of the cell. It is the shape of a protein that determines the function of that protein. And the shape of a protein is based on the sequence or order of those amino acids in the polypeptide chains. The order of the amino acids will cause the chain to fold in a particular manner and give it its specific shape. And the cellular environment will also play a role in determining the shape of that protein. Things such as heat and acidity. Now, if you've ever seen the difference between raw egg whites and cooked egg whites, that difference is due to the heat changing the shape of the proteins that had been in those eggs. Now the last macromolecule we'll be talking about in this week's lecture are the lipids. Lipids contain one or more fatty acids. Lipids are very hydrophobic. They are uncharged and nonpolar, and they do not like to mix with water. And it turns out that there are a few different categories of fatty acids. Some of these you've likely heard of before. The first one we'll talk about are known as saturated fats. A saturated fatty acid is a linear molecule in which there are no bends, no changes in direction in that carbon-hydrogen backbone. These are going to be lipids that are solid at room temperature, things like butter and most animal fats. And so we call these saturated fats. They're saturated because they have the maximum number 
of hydrogens connected to the carbon, and so there are no bends. In contrast, an unsaturated fat will have a bend in the molecule because somewhere along the length there will be a carbon-carbon double bond, and that double bond causes the molecule to bend. This means they cannot stack together as closely, and they move in relation to each other. So these unsaturated fats will be liquid at room temperature. We call these oils, like vegetable oil or corn oil. Now, you may have heard recently about trans fats and how they are harmful to cardiovascular health. These are fats that were unsaturated, but through chemical processing, the bend has been straightened or made more linear. Trans fats end up negatively impacting cholesterol levels. in the body. Now it's interesting is that there are no natural sources of trans fats. Trans fats are specifically when we take unsaturated fats and perform a process called hydrogenation, where we try to add hydrogens to these fats. In doing so, we can change their texture, their consistency. This bent molecule becomes straight or linear. And so margarine is actually a trans fat. It was a vegetable oil that was straightened through the process of hydrogenation. Now, if that hydrogenation process continues, we can actually convert that unsaturated fat into a fully saturated fat. And that's how we get vegetable shortening, or Crisco. In our diet, we consume both fats and oils, which are a particular type of lipid. Fats are normally solid, at room temperature, and composed primarily of saturated fatty acids. Oils are normally liquid at room temperature, and include unsaturated fatty acids. But both of these fats and oils are a specific type of lipid known as a triglyceride. As the name suggests, the tri in triglyceride means three. We have three fatty acids connected to one glycerol molecule. And these triglycerides, they are important for energy storage reserves in our body. Another type of lipid that I want to introduce you to are phospholipids. A phospholipid is similar to a triglyceride has two fatty acid chains and a glycerol molecule. And in the place of that third chain, they also have a phosphate group. The reason why this is significant is because phosphates are polar. They like to mix with water, whereas the fatty acid tails do not. And so a phospholipid molecule will be polar on one end and nonpolar on the other. It will want to mix with water on one end and will be repelled from water on the other. And these play a major component within the plasma membrane of the cells. So to summarize our discussion of these macromolecules, carbohydrates, nucleic acids, proteins, and lipids. Now, when we look at the carbohydrates, the monomers are called monosaccharides. And the polymers are the polysaccharides, glycogen, starch, and cellulose. For the nucleic acids, the monomers are the nucleotides, and the polymers will be our DNA and RNA. For proteins, the monomers are amino acids, and the polymers are known as polypeptides. And lastly, for the lipids, the monomers are going to be the fatty acids.
and the polymers will be the triglycerides and the phospholipids. In our next module, we'll talk about how you both are and aren't what you eat.